Um, it's crazy. Um, this morning I woke up and I was sick to my stomach. Uh, I was so sick that I was throwing up and I was in the bathroom for several hours this morning. And I knew I was supposed to come here to preach tonight and I was just going to preach the same thing I did last week, but God spoke to me and he said, Chris, I want you to um, use your sickness today. Use the sickness you're facing this morning uh, to share the gospel with people. And so um, what God has placed on my heart is that sin, the sin in our lives is like the sickness that hit me this morning. Last night I went to bed. I didn't know I was going to wake up sick. I didn't know I was going to be throwing up this morning. Um, but then this morning, some small bacteria got inside of my body. Um, think about Ebola, the outbreak of Ebola. It's a small piece of bacteria that has got into somebody's body. And guess what? That bacteria leads to death in over 90% of cases. And so when we talk about Ebola or when we talk about a stomach virus, we're talking about something so small and what seems so insignificant, yet it can take a human life. And so today what I want to talk about is sin. Um, the Bible defines sin as going against God, rebelling against what God has commanded us. Sin is when we live any other way than what God has intended us to do, which is to worship him. And when we think about sin, sometimes it's like, oh, I can lust after this girl. Uh, I can get drunk tonight a little bit. I can get tipsy. Um, I can watch a little bit of pornography, and that's okay. That's just little sins. I can, I can tell a lie here. I can deceive someone there. But that sin leads to death. James chapter 1 says that sin gives birth to death. And I am the biggest sinner out here. Um, just Sunday morning, God brought, not God, I was just reflecting back on my life and realizing how hey guys, so, such small sin, what I thought was such insignificant involved. sin, was actually riddling my soul. Some sins that I thought, oh, these are no big deal. And so what I want to teach you all tonight is that, that sin is a sickness. Our souls are riddled with Ebola. Our souls are covered in a, Ebola, a virus that has no Ebola? cure, a virus that is basically going to kill us. There's no chance of hope except for one person, Jesus Christ. And so tonight, I could preach about hell because guess what? Every person who dies in sin, in unrepentant sin, will be in hell. Hell is eternal torment Whoa. and everlasting. But guess what? There's good news. There's good news for each and every one of us. As my brother Tyler preached tonight, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become righteous. Because guess what? Our sin is so deep in our soul that the Bible says it affects our good deeds. Even our good deeds are as filthy rags. And so God is not impressed by what I do. You know what? If I don't believe in Jesus and I don't have faith and I'm standing out here preaching, God's not going to care at the end of the day. You know, at Judgment Day, I've got to die and be judged by God. He doesn't care what good works I did. He cares that I put my faith in him, that I love him, and that I trust the work of his son. And so I'm out here preaching the gospel. Um, and the Bible says that God calls everyone everywhere to repentance. Repentance is not just, oh, I'm going to start going to church, or I'm going to start going to Bible study because I feel guilty. Repentance is saying, I'm done doing these sins, God. In my mind, I hate this sin, and in my body, I'm going to show rejection of this sin. But guess what? I can't tell everybody out here to repent based on your own deeds, based on your own righteousness, based on your flesh, because guess what? We can't do it. That's why Jesus sent his son, is to become righteousness for us. Jesus had to die for us. He had to substitute his righteousness. He had to take the money out of our bank account and, and pay for, he had to pay for sin and then put his righteousness in our account. And so what I'm saying tonight is I'm calling you to repent. I'm calling you not to just walk away from tonight and think, oh, that weird preacher man out there was telling me about this crazy Jesus guy, telling me I'm going to go to hell, but I don't really care. Because guess what? I do care. And I wouldn't stand out here and make myself look like a fool in front of everybody if I didn't believe the message I was bringing. And I'm not here to bring a message of judgment. I'm bringing a message of hope. Because I, at age 17, God revealed to me that I was going to be in hell. God revealed to me that I couldn't fix myself and that my religious, righteous works weren't going to cut it. And then he showed me his son. And that night I put faith in God and it was the most life-changing experience. And so I beg you tonight, don't wait till tomorrow because we could die. Don't wait until next week. Don't wait until next year. Don't wait till you're 30 or 40 or 50 because guess what? We could all get some kind of Ebola disease and be gone. We could all die tonight in our sleep. 
And if we die and we have not put faith and trust in Jesus, our eternal state is hell. But if we put our faith in Jesus tonight, right now, we can be saved. And so I just call upon you, consider the words I speak, lay in the bed tonight and think about it. Weigh these things through. Really be concerned about death and life. Think about what's coming because Jesus is real. God is real. I don't have to prove it. God proves himself. Just look around at creation. Um, but thank you again for your time. Um, I'm here with Legacy Church. If anyone wants to speak to me or, or hear more about this gospel, I could go more in depth. Um, God has changed my life since I was 17 years old. I'm 25 now. I had no reason to turn, but I did because God gripped my soul so tightly. So uh, come to Faith in Christ tonight. Uh, come speak with us. Come hang out with us. Uh, we're on campus several times a week. Thank you for your time.